Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. The liberals must have noticed that the mainstream media is softening on the conservatives lately as they sense the winds of political change blowing and not in their favor. As part of the fall economic statement, the liberals have committed to allocating a fortune to continuing to bail out the failing news organizations. Here's a National Post article we found today. The liberals expand payroll tax credit for news publishing in fall economic update. The government statement announced an increase to the Canadian Journalism Tax Credit, a refundable tax credit allowing qualifying news outlets to claim up to 35% of up to $85,000 in salary for a qualified employee. A federal program allowing news publishers to claim a tax credit for a portion of journalists' salaries is set to increase, the Liberal government announced Tuesday. The government's fall economic statement announced an increase to the Canadian Journalism Tax Credit, a refundable tax credit allowing qualifying news outlets to claim up to 35% of up to $85,000 in salary for a qualified employee. That's an increase from the credit's initial allowance of 25% of up to $55,000 in salary per employee. First announced in the government's 2018 fall economic statement and made official in the 2019 federal budget, the tax credit was designed to support print news publishers. The newly expanded tax credit will be retroactive to the beginning of 2023, the economic update said. It projects the cost to the federal government will be $129 million over five years. Andrew McLeod, President and Chief Executive Officer of Post Media Network, who also owns National Post, Canada's largest newspaper publisher, among many other titles, said he was pleased with the announcement Tuesday. Quote, It's a very difficult and extremely challenging environment, and this is a clear indication from the federal government that they understand that there is a crisis and they're stepping forward with meaningful support, end quote, he said. McLeod expressed gratitude to Canada's Heritage and Finance Minister, as well as the President of the Treasury Board for supporting Canadian journalism. Quote, While the tax credits are extremely meaningful, the industry and government need to move the conversation to structural reforms so that the Canadian domestic media industry can compete and architect its own future, end quote, he added. Only news outlets who meet the government's conditions of being a, quote, qualified Canadian journalism organization, end quote, are eligible for the tax credit. To do so, they must be, quote, engaged in the production of original news content, end quote, and, quote, primarily focused on matters of general interest and reports of current events, including coverage of democratic institutions and processes, end quote, according to the current legislation. Employees whose salaries are eligible under the tax credit are those who work at least 26 hours per week and devote at least 75% of their day-to-day job performing news gathering, reporting, writing, or researching. So what does this mean in dollars and cents? It means that before Freeland tabled this update, they were bailing out 13,750 per news employee, and that has now increased to up to $29,750 per news employee. That is outrageous. So here's the thing about that. They're projecting that it's going to cost $129 million over five years, but that's not a fixed amount. They're just guessing based on what that tax credit could could possibly be. So it could be actually much, much higher than that. So that's the problem with this liberal government is they never actually have firm costing estimates. And it's no wonder that they're running a $40 billion a year deficit. Well, and just by my math, if they take $129 million and divide that by, let's say, roughly $30,000 per employee. That equals 4,300 employees. Now, divide that by five years, and that means you're only giving this credit to 860 employees per year. Right. So that estimate is really, really far off what the real estimate, no doubt, is. So according to newcanadianmedia.ca, the estimated number of journalists in Canada is about 11,000 in 2021. Now, not all of those 11,000 journalists are going to meet those requirements set out by 
by the government, but I imagine that it's going to be more than 860 journalists per year that will qualify for this grant. Well, and remember, it's not just the journalists. It's people producing. It's people writing. It's pe- like it's people researching. So it's a lot more than just the journalists, right? So you're talking tens of thousands of employees. 129 million? That's not even that's not even going to be close. Now, news about Bill C-18 has all but disappeared, and that's because all of the saber rattling from the government and media organizations to investigate Meta has had no effect at all. However, time is running out because C-18 comes into effect as of December 19th of this year, referring to a CTV news article. The Online News Act is set to come into effect no later than 180 days after June 22nd, the day it received a royal assent. This means the new policies within the bill are on track to be in effect as of December 2023. Work is now underway on the federal government side of the bill to create the regulatory framework that will bring Bill C-18 into effect. On September 1st, the Department of Canadian Heritage released the proposed regulations for implementing the Online News Act, providing what senior officials framed as the clarity platforms asked for around the implications of the new law. Unveiling the regulations has kicked off consultations with key stakeholders on how the framework should be finalized. Referring to a article written by Michael Geist, once the law takes effect, the clock on negotiations and potential mediation and arbitration begins. The timelines are fixed in Section 19.1 of the law, 90 days to negotiate and 120 days for mediation. If there is no agreement and no request to the CRTC to extend the deadlines, the issue can go to final offer arbitration. To be clear, none of these timelines are subject to the regulation-making process. They are fixed and they create obvious urgency for anyone facing compliance requirements. So how will this impact Northern Perspective? Well, we may or may not be able to properly source our stories as we usually do because we directly link to articles that we use in the description. This means that in the future, we may have to cite our sources in a different way that we're still deciding upon. What we do know is that if Meta and Google don't budge, and if the government continues its failed game of chicken, it's going to be the Canadian taxpayer that is funding the alleged independent media. But how independent can media be when the government is now paying 35% of all of the news-related staff salaries? The short as well as the long answer are equally simple. They can't be independent at all. 